So how did you actually go about kind of reestablishing your identity after that injury? Yeah. So I had to do a lot of like that mental work. A lot of the stuff that I was like, this is so dumb, like started meditating, mm. right. Sitting with myself a little bit more, writing out my gratitude, writing out on a piece of paper, how I was actually feeling without being scared. Like when I was writing, like, I don't think I want to live anymore. Like it actually felt better for me to put it on the piece of paper and then be like, wait, is that true? Mm -hmm. Like, do I actually yeah. not want it? No, that's, that mm -hmm. can't be true. Like there's so many other things that I'm, I'm good at. So Sitting down and actually sitting with myself, meditating, um, journaling, taking the opportunity when I couldn't actually use my leg to work on my mindset, which is something I clearly was just avoiding. I was just avoiding working on any kind of mindset type yes. things. Yeah, it's hard to confront that stuff, and then the injury forces you to confront it. And I appreciate you sharing, um, being vulnerable, and being willing to share how, like, at that period of time, you didn't have like this this desire or this will to live. And I think a person that doesn't understand you might be like, "Come on, that's like seems a little bit extreme." But when your identity is so tied to these things that you had been doing for a while, and then that's ripped out from under your feet, you don't really know what to do with yourself. You don't know who you are. Like what? Like yeah. what am I? Since it was so tied to only that, will people only love me if I have that? Mm -hmm. I know that sounds so wild, but you need to learn to love yourself without all those different things. Yeah. And I think that was definitely the growth opportunity that I had to learn through that. And I was able to turn it around. I started focusing on things that I could control, mm -hmm. which is, hey, you know what? Maybe I didn't like I tore my ACL because. Uh, I didn't have a strong core. I was focusing on super explosive ninja -y things, mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to the foundational pieces, right? I was forgetting about, you know, simple movements like a dead bug or like stuff like yeah. that. I, w I didn't have a strong foundation. I was just only doing the big, big thing. So mm -hmm. it allowed me the opportunity to go back and focus on that. And then I started filming that journey. So I had like my, my brace on, I'd go up and I'd show people, I'm just going to work on what I can work on right now. Mm -hmm. And I was honestly just posting it for myself. This is before Instagram was like super crazy big. I didn't really know what Instagram what was going to turn into. Um, so I just started posting those things and it's just they started going viral. It was just people being like, thank you so much for sharing this wow. because because you got up with your leg and you're doing stuff that, you know, working what you can work on. It got me up. And that's when I started to click right there. Once I posted those things again, I was just posting it for myself mm -hmm. to keep myself going. I was like, this is a bigger opportunity here mm, yes like if i can get through this now that these people are messaging me maybe they can get through what they need so i realized mm -hmm. that i had a way bigger purpose mm -hmm. that was more than just me winning a competition and all yeah. those flashy names that i had it was so much bigger than i had ever thought it's really an interesting insight into coaching and being able to relate to the people that you ultimately want to help build where like i remember my high school football coach was the type of guy who would actually run the sprints with you and there's this almost like power dynamic where a lot of coaches hold themselves above the people that they're teaching. But you as someone who's just being vulnerable and sharing, hey, I'm like on my ass right now trying to just like get healthy again, probably drew so many people into your world where it's like, wow, this person's actually relatable. Like I can actually learn a lot from her, but also like, you know, be kind of like a peer in some ways. Like this is actually helping me get better or you know take the first step which for a lot of people is the hardest step to take the first step is 100 percent the hardest step to take mm -hmm. and yeah i definitely feel like that really helps me to relate to my clients right now because i always tell them at the beginning of any workshop i do i'm like let me just tell you a little bit about me right now because you're mm -hmm. gonna look at all those big things that i did and you're yeah. gonna think that like she just has it all and like yeah she just got it right away and i'm like that is not the case like that yeah. is not what happened i had to go through a ton through these things and mm -hmm. learn a lot as i was doing them mm -hmm. and that's why you saying that is so important because i could imagine if i was a a woman that couldn't do one pull up, look at your Instagram at first glance, I'd be like, it's hard to relate to her. But that's why your story is so important because you're like, I know what it feels like to like, you know, blow up my ACL, not really have this will to live, be like the lowest of the low. And here are the things that I did to kind of pull myself out of that. And also with social media content creation, it feels so good to just create something, not to just like selfishly push a goal forward, but actually to help people too. Yeah. I forget who we were talking to. We were just talking about this the other day. We were talking to someone who, is prone to getting depressed. And he said that whenever he feels that feeling of anxiety or depression, he just goes out and just does something nice for someone. And I feel like that's kind of what you're reminding me of right now. Of like when you're just creating to try and help other people, it feels amazing. Yeah. Once it starts to click like that, like if I keep going and help somebody else keep going, it, everything is completely different. Yeah. It just, it goes from like, 
being feeling like selfish, I guess, in mm-hmm. a way to like, it, no, it's like to, to that's not like that anymore. And yeah, I'm going to, I have a bigger purpose and a bigger why. Yeah. And it really done, comes down to your why, right? Because a lot yeah. of times when you were younger, we don't really have a why yet. Mm-hmm. We don't really know what that is. So when you have a really deep why and a deep purpose, it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. Did you have any reservations about posting content when you first started posting stuff? Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely did. I, I had no idea. Again, Instagram wasn't like, like that yet. I didn't really yeah. understand like what Instagram was and I didn't really know if people wanted to see, I don't know, me going through this hard ass time. You know what I mean? Me sitting there, I have videos. If you go on my highlights, you see me like crying during my <laughs> thing. And I, but I, I just took them through the journey with me. I was like, I'm going to be honest, like this freaking sucks. I woke up yeah. in the worst pain. I literally could not walk to the bathroom. Yeah. Like I couldn't get Jeez. to the bathroom and I had to crawl on the floor. Like it's like those things that, you know, I was a little nervous. It's like what's oversharing and want to like overshare, do too yeah. much. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to share just my journey because I feel like that's mm-hmm. the that's the one thing that I feel like I can, you know, get, bring to the world right now. Yeah, I think if you like meditate on it or like use your gut instinct, you typically know what's oversharing versus what's not oversharing and you just lead with that instinct too. Yeah, for right? sure. Um, so I guess in some ways the ACL led to you like getting building this whole platform and this pull up offering and everything, right? It was it was so funny because my coach one time had told me it's a blessing in disguise. And at that moment I was like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is not a blessing in disguise. Do you hear. see this? Like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Um, a hundred percent a blessing in disguise. Cause yeah, it definitely led me to these next things. Mm-hmm. When I tore my ACL, a lot of things. And when I started doing my meditation and, and journaling more and, and all those different things, I started realizing that like, I didn't want to own a gym. Mm. Like I'd open the gym because I thought that what I was, was I was supposed to do, but that's not what I wanted. I felt like the same way I felt when I was doing the pharmaceutical stuff. I'm like right back to square one. So it, that gave me the courage to then say, I'm shutting down the gym, Wow, which is wild. So during that time, shut down the gym. Um, I thought I was going to disappoint so many people, but if anything, those people at my gym were so great. They were like, no, we support you in whatever it is that you want to yeah. do. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. 